So hello and welcome to another video. Today is gonna to be all about showing you how to do the best knocking point possible for your recurve bow. So I've done loads of different types of knocking points and this is by far the best method I've found and come up with. I think someone showed me years ago and it just stays on the string for an insanely long amount of time. It's super thin and you can't notice it under the tab. and It doesn't come off the string, it doesn't move and it's super stable. So this is why I like this because it makes sure that you don't have to keep reserving a knocking point every couple of weeks, every month or so. I've shot strings <laughs> admittedly for too long, maybe for three, four, five months and this knocking point just literally stays on the string until you decide to take it off yourself. It's really, really great. So all you're going to need for this is first of all obviously a bracing height gauge and that's to basically place your knocking point where you want it. Then obviously you need your material. So I've got, um, here's some angel material and I've put this on a spool and you'll need for this method, you'll need the material on a spool like this. It doesn't matter the type of spool, so you can have you know different types. My preferred one is this Biter professional tool with the, with the metal winders. That is the best one, but any other type of tool is fine. A small pen, kind of sharpie marker, permanent marker to just mark where you're going to put the knocking point on the string. And then here, these are some medical forceps. So these are going to be used to basically tie down the knocking point and pull some of the thread through. You can also use thin nose pliers, which work great, but these are amazing. So you can get these on Amazon for like two, three dollars maybe. So these are really, really good. Um, I definitely recommend getting a pair of these if you don't have them already. So what I'm going to do now is turn the camera around. I've got the bow set up there. I'm not sure if you can see that, but I'm going to turn the camera around and basically show you how to do the knocking point. I guess before we get started, I should say that this method is much more complicated than some people might want to do. And I've just recently done another video, which is how to do the best easy knocking point and this is for beginners so if you want have a look at the card up there for that video and that's probably the best beginner knocking point which is super simple to do but this is my preferred knocking point that is the best absolute quality so you can choose which one you want to do um, and kind of see the pros and cons of each now i'll switch the camera around and show you how to do it so the first thing you need to do is get your bracing height gauge Clip it onto the string and then obviously put it onto the arrow rest like that and then just take your marker so I've got a little gold marker because the string is black so obviously you wouldn't be able to see a black marker on here and now I'm just going to just measure and mark the top of the bottom knocking point so normally for me around on this bow it's around 11 millimeters so I'll just mark that Perfect. So what I've done there is this mark is obviously quite wide. The top of the mark is where I want the top of the knocking point to be. I don't mind there being, a, you know, the mark being a bit too wide because I'm going to cover it with the knocking point anyway. So now you can basically take the gauge off and then start with the knocking point. So literally all you need to do to get started is get your winder and get a length of serving past the winder like that. You want the winder on a, a kind of medium tension where you can you know, I can roll this round and I can move it and it's not too tight. So then you simply lay this part of the serving on the top of the string. It doesn't really matter where it is right now. And you just do one loop and grab it with your index and thumb. So I've done one loop here. And what I want to do is basically bring this loop to the mark there. But you're not going to be able to get it tight now. So I just use the index finger to hold it and then use the thumb to hold the other part of the serving and do another one. Thumb down and around. Index finger down, thumb off and then you can check. And then you put the thumb here again. Then you do another one and then thumb on, index finger off, there, index finger on, thumb off. Simple. So you'll notice this isn't actually anywhere really near the correct place yet and that's fine. You're basically putting the strands on to make sure that when you take your fingers away it won't just pull through and just fall to the floor because if I did that now the whole thing would just fall so I'll do another one on thumb index finger off index finger on simple so now what we can do is kind of pull this through slightly 
like that, just lightly with the hand. And now we're getting, what we can see is an, it's forming already kind of the beginning of a nice knocking point. So now what we need to do is before we put too many rotations of the string on, we need to shuffle it up to the right place. Because otherwise, if we put too many on, obviously it's gripping more and more with every rotation and then you won't be able to move it. So what I just do now is just with my thumb, just move it up. And you can basically use the width of the mark there, like I said, to tell you where to move it to. Now, the tricky thing here is this strand here, later on, we're gonna pull through to tighten this end. And what that will do is basically pull this final, this beginning, sorry, this beginning part of the serving, it'll pull it through. And what that means is it will be actually a little bit lower than what it is now. So I always put it a little bit higher because it's easy to pull it through and lower it, but it's harder to pull it back up. So I put it a little bit higher than the mark and then to continue one more there. So now we've done five rotations of the serving material and we can take it off. It's not falling now, so that's fine. So now we'll do a couple more. Six, seven. And you'll notice I'm not being too careful with these. I just, each one I just Put the, use the thumb to put them together and already forming a really nice, clean, tight knocking point. And then rather than pulling the gauge, the winder gauge, you just wind it with your thumb on the other hand and then round again. Round again. And as you kind of rotate this round, you can see some little gaps. You can just close these gaps with your thumb and that's all good. That's 11, if I counted correctly. There. So if I counted correctly, that should be about 15. And this is the halfway point. So basically what you might have noticed already is this is essentially a center serving. We're using the tool like a center serving. We're starting it like a center serving and we're gonna finish it like a center serving as well. It's a mini center serving and that's why it's so neat and it's such a good secure knocking point. So what we need to do now is pull this thread through to secure this end, then tidy up this bit a little bit and then do the reverse part. So what we're gonna do for that is just before we do anything is check the height again because it's easy because we don't have the gauge and we can't really see the mark now because we've served over it, it's easy to get it slightly wrong. So we just check that. So that's perfect. At the moment, the knocking point is 12 millimeters. I want it at 11. And then when I pull this strand through here, that will just lower this top part a tiny, tiny bit. So it's really, really simple there. So. What I'm going to do now is take the gauge off and get those medical forceps. Again, you can use thin nose pliers, but these forceps are really, really good because you can put them down, clip them in like that, and you can use this part here to clip the string. And now it's tied from here, and then you can just rotate it around like this, and then just lightly pull this through to start. If you pull it through too much, it will split through the serving uh, material. So just lightly pull it and use your thumb on the other hand to move where it is and make what you want here is A, you're moving the knocking point down slightly because it was a little bit high and B, you want this top part where the knock goes to be nice and level all the way around. You don't want a high bit and then a low bit. So just do this and then if you're not quite getting the height low enough, you can pull in that direction, like that, and that will gently, very slowly, that will lower the knocking point. So I would do that, and then again, I would check it. I would get the gauge, pop it on, check the height. Now, that's very, very close where I want it. So now we just finalize this top part of the knocking point. I'm gonna pull it through a bit tighter. You have to be careful here not to pull it too tight 
and pull it through the center serving. I'm just doing it tight enough here. So now that's all good. What we want to do is leave this on and then get our knife. Apologies, I didn't say at the start of the video, you will need some sort of blade or knife just to cut this. And then you just get the knife close to the edge here of where the serving is and cut in that direction. Just like that, easy. So now you can put all that stuff down and basically you just wanna tidy up this part. You can see there's a couple of gaps there, that kind of thing. So just tidy it up a little bit with your thumb. And then I like to just use the material to just pull it that way. And I'm basically just tightening the final few strands there. So now we're ready to do the reverse. This is the slightly complicated bit in that it can get a little bit confusing when you first learn this. So at the moment, it's not very clear right now, but you can see the string is on the near, the serving material is on the near side of the string. It's not on the far side here, it's coming up on this near side. So what we wanna do is make a long length, so I'm lengthening now this amount of string here available off the spool, and then I'll bring the spool down to the other side, there. So now you can see this side is coming up near the camera, this side is going down away from the camera. And then all you do is you lengthen this again, so I just lengthen that, and I've made a big loop here. So I've made a loop there, and I'm just gonna make the loop bigger, and all you do, literally, is serve into the loop following this direction you've created here. So it's the opposite to this one, that's the key thing. So then you just go in the loop and serve one. And then two, three, and what you want to do here is make sure the serving spool is pretty much as loose as possible so you don't rotate the string and grab it with the spool. You're just freely doing it and you're not twisting the string too much. And you want to make sure you're keeping the tension on this part so that the work you've done here to make a nice tight knocking point isn't just kind of destroyed. So now we carry on. We've got three here. We did 15 this way and I do 14 that way. There we go, 14. So now effectively we've used the tool how we need to and we've served pretty much everything. All we need to do now is get this part to here. So again, we get the spool, we lengthen it a little bit and we want to bring this spool over to this side. So we've made a length and you can see here, it's on this part of the string and you just let it fall to that side. Yeah, so that's fine. Now it's just hanging there and it's basically being secured under this part of the string here. And now all we do is we serve this way with this right hand side, and as we serve this way, it takes off from this side that we did. So this is the part. So now this is basically doing this final part using this, and we'll get a nice end, and we won't have basically a knot or anything, stuff like that. So we just wanna make sure that when we do that, serve on and what you can see here see this knot here that tiny bit of string was the bit we cut off so you can see as we've done this process it's kind of unserved the top of the knocking point slightly and this is why I do 15 on the way down 14 on the way up because it does unserve it slightly you could maybe even do 16 and 14 it doesn't really matter as long as it's long enough to basically not come undone now we do two, three, and what you need to do when you do this is every couple of rotations, you need to make sure you're doing it tight enough. So you get the string and you push it up, and then use your thumb, See that? and then there's a gap there. So you use your thumb, make sure it's tight enough. It's really, really important to do this final bit tight enough. Otherwise, the work you've done to make it really good is wasted. So. Again, I get my thumb in this position and I pull the string that way, make sure it's tight enough. And I do another couple. Same again, tighten it down. You can see now it's super nice, smooth knocking point. Not moving, 
no gaps. And when you shoot this, it's gonna be incredible. There's no big lump under your tab. And because it's longer than maybe a knocking point that stops like here, much, much less likely to move or come undone or have any kind of issues and stuff like that. So much, much better. So I'm just going round, round, and then tighten it. Round, and then now, here you can see we've got to the end. There's no more serving to put on. Now there's effectively a loop like that. So then again, we get our medical forceps, or again, thin nose pliers works fine. We put them together and we put them in the loop. So if you can, you can see the loop here, I get the pliers or the thin nose, uh, thin nose pliers or the forceps, I put them in this loop that way and then go up to the top and I've just secured the uh, material basically into the forceps and then I just want to make sure, pull that back so it's all tight here. So you can't see it at the moment, it's out of the frame, but as I pull this through, you'll see it. Now what we want to do is get this spool with the other hand, tighten these down as much as possible, and I mean really, really tight. So I've really tightened the spool down now. So now we just need to pull through the string, and as we're pulling it through, it's maybe hard to see, but now you can see it's shortening this loop. So what we want to do is bring the forceps round here to the part where the loop is and then slowly keep pulling, pulling through, pulling through and then here. Now don't take the forceps out yet. What you want to do is make sure you've pulled enough with this, make sure it's tight enough, use your thumb here and then very slowly take the forceps out, pull it through, just like that. So there we are. So now it's just a case of doing some little bit of tidying up. So finally, we want to make sure the bottom part here is neat and tidy and also flat and level all the way around, same as the top part. Being level isn't as important obviously because the knock isn't on it, but you also you do want to make sure that it's tight and secure. The mistake people make here is they will now pull this through really hard to get this secure and that will often go through the string because they haven't made this level because of the angle of it. If you make this level first, then pull through, you won't need to pull it through as tightly. So you can just get a, you can use your thumb or get a bracing height gauge just to make it level here. Like that. And then you can pull it through a little bit and then do the same again. So you just pull it through a little bit and I'm just shortening this spool at the moment and then I just pull it through a little bit. And being careful not to pull through too tightly. And now this is looking quite nice and secure here. There is a bit where it's not quite level. So I'll get the gauge again. Put that there and then pull it through. So now you can see this knocking point is super, super neat. Bit longer than a normal knocking point. So it's not gonna feel as noticeable a bulge on the tab. And it's much, much less likely to come undone. Finally, all you need to do now is get your knife and see the serving is kind of coming out this way and then down. Get your knife really close to the edge and then just cut the string like that and then there we go super neat there's almost no kind of string coming out here and being you know sticking out and all kind of fluffy bits of string what you can do here if there's a little bit sticking out is use a, a torch or like a, a lighter just to burn that final bit off and tie it down but what you've got here is an amazing beautiful knocking point that's going to stay exactly where you've put it and it's not going to move. Finally, you can add a little bit of super glue if you want, leave it to dry for 10-15 minutes and then shoot it, but it's really, I don't actually put super glue on mine 
because they're so secure then they often don't need it if you've done this correctly um, but you can do it if you want now all that's left to do is do the top one because obviously you need the two of them so for this i won't bore you <laughs> in this video with showing you exactly the same thing again but for this the key thing is to turn the bow around because obviously we served from the top here and now the arrow is going to go in here so we served from here down and we could predict exactly where we started it because we served in that direction and we could move it along position it exactly how we wanted and then we're then we're done and this bottom part is a little bit less uh, you know it doesn't matter too much if the height isn't exactly perfect so on the other way if we if we kept the bow in this position and served towards the knock it'd be quite hard to predict the exact finishing point because of that reverse loop method. So you wanna turn the bow that way, start the serving here and serve this way. So it's exactly the same thing, but you just turn the bow around, you start where the knock is and then serve the other way. And then you've got two perfect knocking points. So that's the, the method of how to do this. I hope you've kind of learnt something new here and seen how neat and tidy this can be. Honestly, once you start using these knocking points, you, you won't use a, a different type. They're so, so good. At first it's a bit fiddly, it'll take you a while to learn it, but once you've learnt it, you can do them pretty quick. Um, so yeah, give it a go and let me know in the comments below what you think of this method. So I hope you found that video helpful. I hope you definitely give this method a go. It is by far the best thinnest, most stable and secure knocking point that you can make on your string and it will not come undone if you do it correctly and make sure it's tightened down properly. Now if you want a knocking point which is a bit simpler or maybe you're a beginner and you want that kind of knocking point, have a look at this video here on the screen and that's perfect for beginners. Also if you haven't subscribed to the channel make sure to subscribe up here and as always thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.